Well, joining us now is Remy Piet. He's a research associate at the University of Miami and has co-authored a book on the foreign policy of Russia, Turkey, and the European Union. Remy, thanks so much for being with us. This is a conflict that few in the world follow, an ethnically Armenian majority inside of Azerbaijan. We've seen relative calm for about 25 years now, and now a week of escalating violence, but it's only getting worse by the day. Where is this heading? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one of those frozen conflicts that you, you, you see developing and that haven't been developing over the last uh, few years since the fallout of the Soviet Union. So, I mean, this Caucasus region, we've seen the case in, uh, in, in Georgia in 2008, and now this conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh between Armenia and Azerbaijan is being revived now because of, you know, a series of different issues. The, the kind of, of, of geopolitical gap with the U.S. elections right now overseas is something that allows for more local conflict to become, uh, you know, more heated. There's also the the, the support of, of Turkey to Azerbaijan on their attempts and claims at, you know, over Nagorno-Karabakh, which is, you know, officially, according to Turkey, part of Azerbaijan. So the claim is actually, you know, receivable on this. The support of Turkey has emboldened the, uh, the, the, the desires of, of Azerbaijan to implement those, those, uh, those uh, claims. Uh, and on the other side, there's, you know, nationalistic rhetoric uh, in Armenia that has been, you know, stronger under the Pashinyan administration, more than under the Sarkisian one before. And, and so you have this, a series of different variables and, 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 and reason for spikel that have led to a, a, a sparkling of, of this conflict right now in Nazo Kabarak with, a, with a, a high level of death, unfortunately. And Remy, we're hearing reports of civilians fleeing uh, Stepanakert, the biggest city there in uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. They say they feel they're intentionally being driven out. Uh, these would be ethnic Armenians. Is, is there merit to that claim? I mean, there is. I mean, if you look at the, at the history of, of the region again, I mean, so it's a region that unfortunately has been plagued by genocides and, and very strong conflict. I and mean, we obviously have in mind the, the relation between Armenia and Turkey since the 1915, uh, the, the, the claimed genocide on the Armenian side by, by Turkish forces. Same thing on the series of conflict in the region. Uh, there, there will be, uh, on part of the negotiations that were actually at play, I mean, that there's been negotiation for the last 20 years, uh, more specifically over the last four years, unfortunately that broke down, uh, there were an issue of, of self you know, determination of, of the population of nagorno karabakh So obviously at this level, if you want to push populations out of the regions that end up contabilized for a potential vote at some point, this is a, a classic, you know, a tactic and by military forces of pushing out populations. Uh, and there's been the same thing, to be very honest, also on the other side from the Armenian uh, ethnies in, in nagorno karabakh pushing, you know, as there is out of cities such as Agdam, for example, large cities that used to be a large city in uh, nagorno karabakh So these movements of populations have, have a, a strong history in, in the region for obvious political and military claims down the road. Is there a chance that the U.S. might get dragged into this conflict? We already uh, understand that the Armenian Prime Minister spoke with senior U.S. Uh, national security officials and asked, what is the U.S. going to do if Turkey gets involved, a NATO ally with American F-16 fighter jets? So it's important first to, to, to remind people that there is an ongoing negotiation process that has been stalled on, on, on a regular occasion, but that has been, had been more efficient under the Sarkisian administration in Armenia with Aliyev. Uh, and and the, the actors, you know, around those negotiations are France, uh, Russia, in the United States, part of the OSCE Minsk group that has been overlooking those negotiations for the last few years. So obviously, the United States is at least diplomatically involved into, into those questions. Very quickly into, into the, the start of those conflicts, the three powers have been calling for ceasefire from the get-go. Uh, so there is really a, a consensus at this level of the OSCE Minsk group. Uh, Turkey, however, which is much more to the side of, of, of Azerbaijan on this conflict, has been calling and, and supporting claims from, uh, uh, from Ali and the Azeris on this conflict. So that's where you have this entanglement of, of different geopolitical interests. Keep in mind, obviously, the, the ongoing conflict between Turkey and the European Union, especially led by President Macron, which is also part of the OSCE Mines Group, over the, uh, the gas resources in the Mediterranean. So that all the issues of nationalism and, and local conflict are being used sometimes by different political actors to legitimate some of their the potential loss on, geo, on the uh, foreign policy scene or the, the granting of their local power nationally. And we heard uh, Brussels warning Ankara just last week about the Eastern Mediterranean. Remy Piet, there from the University of Miami, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure.